Hey, what is up, YouTube? Coles here. This is the continuation of the Murder Castle Nathria card review. We are going class by class, and we've done Demon Hunter. Now we are moving on to Druid. So we have Twitch chat here as well. Like, subscribe, comment, all these things. Okay, let's just get right into it. So the first one we have here is the location card for Druid. If you don't know how location cards work, you could go to my earlier video where we, um, my earlier card review, where we're starting to review the cards as they came out until we just decided to do them all at once but basically they're things that stick on the board you get to trigger them every other turn up to their durability but yeah that's just that's what those are but so the first one we have here is hedge maze this is the druid one this is the druid review this is trigger a friendly minions death rattle you get to actually you play this for three mana whenever you want. Like if you play this on turn three, for example, and then anytime you play a death rattle, you can immediately trigger it with this. And it's almost, there is one neutral card which can destroy a location, but otherwise they're uninteractable. There are some, it's worth saying that there are some very big death rattles you can hit with this. There's a couple in the Druid set and there are some, there's a, a couple of really big neutral ones too. There's like the new Sludge Belcher, which would give you a 2-4 taunt. There's the new 10 drop, which would give you an 8-8 rush, which would be absolutely disgusting, right? There are some pretty big high rolls with this, but a lot of times, this is one of those things where you don't, you just don't tend to have that many death rattles in your deck, even when there are some of them in the pool. So it's very hit or miss. It could be like game winning, this could be, or it could also be completely, completely useless. So... Probably not something you want to draft until you know that you actually have some of the synergies. But it's worth saying, right? Like this thing, you don't have to use this. Like you can play this on turn three and then wait until turn 10 to actually get the combo. So, but that would mean you're skipping three early mana, which might mean you, you know, you die before turn 10. So it's like extremely, extremely hit or miss this card. Next one you have here is Natural Causes, the two mana nature spell. It's a common, and you will see it a lot. As a result, it's deal two damage, summon a two two tree end. So there are theoretically tree end synergies, maybe. I don't I don't know if there are going to be. We don't know the new rotation, so there might be tree end synergies that could matter. But generally speaking, I mean this is just two mana two two. Deal two damage. Spring Rocket is somewhere crying, because Spring Rocket was a three mana two one, deal two damage. And that was a good card. This is just Super, super power creep on Spring Rocket, right? I guess you don't have mech synergies, but I mean, yeah, it's just, it's just very good. You will pick this very often. So let's move on to the legendary here. This is Topior the Shrubbergazor. What, what, what is that name? Anyway, 7 mana 5 5 Bow Cry for the rest of the game after you cast a nature spell. Summon a 3 3 Whelp with Rush. So even in Arena, you will tend to have pretty good number of nature spells right there's a nature spell that discovers more nature spells as well which is probably the next card on the list here um so yeah i mean it's a little bit slow right if you just play this on turn seven it's a seven mana five five but this is a pretty good win condition for druid if you can afford to play this it's you're, you you can expect to get a bit of value out of this so a little bit synergy based you might not want to you wouldn't take it unless you actually have at least a few nature spells already, but you know, not terrible. Still like, it's going to be worse than a lot of other legendaries, but so you might not always take this, but in the right deck, it could be very good. Moving on next, we have Cecily of the Fey Court. It's an 8 mana 8 8, also a legendary. It's an 8 mana 8 8 taunt. Death Rattle, draw a minion, reduce its cost by 8. So the unfortunate thing about this is that you cannot choose the minion you draw, obviously. So you might just draw one drop and then, oh yeah, that's sick. You get a negative seven mana one drop. No, it doesn't work that way. You just get a zero mana one drop, right? So it's going to be again, on average, I mean, even if you just get like a zero mana three, four, I guess it's kind of okay, right? But like that's not even really good. It's one of those things where like this would be an eight mana eight eight taunt is just not really that good. I guess it's a draw, so it's something, but it's not amazing most of the time. Of course, you have the chance that I mean, if you just drafted, imagine if you just had thirty of these chat, then you can just draw a million of them. But most of the time, it's going to be pretty good, but not crazy good. Occasionally, it will be crazy good, but most of the time, it'll just be like hmm, decent. 
it's an all right legendary basically next up we have planet evidence it's a one mana nature spell which we kind of alluded to earlier there's a common you're going to be seeing a lot of these let's discover a spell that costs two less this turn so you could i guess it's not always discovering a nature spell but like you could just get like you know you could just discover the natural causes and get two of your procs on topier the shrub gazer which could be pretty cool but also theoretically i mean there might be certain i'm gonna have to see like what the whole card pool looks like there might be certain turns you might try to specifically go for something you could try to get like a really cheap overgrowth or something for example theoretically right or try to get a early or um a nourish or something so you can try to go for like there's going to be certain turns you're going to really want to go for this but overall i mean so potentially negative it's potentially a discover and an innervate combined for zero mana effectively right like very very good card most of the time but it's an interesting one because you're not necessarily going to want to play it on turn one right you might want to wait but yeah it's it's always going to be very good we don't know what the sets are in rotation so yeah, that's going to determine things, but there's going to be, you know, there's no way that that card isn't going to be very, very good. Next one we have here is Plot of Sin. This is a three mana nature spell. Summon two, two, two tree ants. Infuse five, two, five, five ancients instead, which is horrific because that means you don't get the tree ant synergy anymore. It's making the card worse. No, no, but like, yeah, three mana get two, five, fives is absolutely disgustingly powerful. <laughs> Infuse 5, I mean, that's hard to do, but I mean, there's ways you can summon multiple bodies in Druid most of the time, right? So this is not that hard to pull off. And then, so the way Infuse works, if you're wondering, is that this upgrades in your hand after X friendly minions die. So basically, if you're holding this, you need to have five minions die, and then you get this upgraded effect. This would also be one of the, this is another one of those cards where it'd be, a, since it's synergized with itself, this would be one of those candidates for if you have 30 of these in your deck, do you just automatically win? As would the um, planet evidence, because you can just discover things like this. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I mean, three mana get two two twos is a card and it's a pretty good card, right? And so, the thing is, is that people are probably gonna get baited because sometimes you're just going to want to play this on upgraded. It's a good card on upgraded, but obviously it's a lot of upside. If you have another option, you do the other option because this is absurdly good. Ancients are not treants, I don't believe. They are ancients, which are not treants. But yeah, this is just... It's a hell of a win condition. Three mana for a 10 ton, basically. Crazy. Very, very strong. I mean, this is probably like a five-star card, actually. This is very good. Next up, we have Nightshade Bud. Eight mana spell. Nature. Choose one. Discover a minion from your deck to summon or a spell to cast. So I imagine you get to choose minion or spell. And then you get to do this. It's a bit risky in a normal deck, right? Because you can't... You don't get to only pick, like, big minions in your decks or big spells in your deck most of the time the more likely thing is that you have this with another big spell and then you get to cast the big spell because um you can also try to like hit the big minion in your deck but you might just completely miss you might hit three early drops and then you just lose the game instantly so this is probably not very good in most decks but you would want to have this with other big spells in your deck potentially so then you could actually just tutor them out because you might actually only have three spells after a while and then you're guaranteed to hit the good big spell right that would be what you would probably be looking for out of this but that's like a very condition it's like a very niche situation we're talking about that's just so like i don't think you're going to draft this most of the time i think it's going to be pretty bad usually but if you just only have big spells in your deck you know then it's very good you can discover it for free but it costs you eight mana still but yeah, it's like very good if you can hit something. But Next one we have here, one of the big spells you would actually want to combo with the last card is Convoke the Spirits. It's a 10 mana, 10 mana nature spell. Cast eight random druid spells. Targets chosen randomly. <laughs> so it's puzzle box, but it's druid. Um, the thing is with this is that compared to, um, compared to like puzzle box and mage, druid cards can't really 
mess you up that bad. It could cast like Celestial Alignment. And it depends on if if Astral Communion if Astral Communion is in, this card becomes significantly, significantly worse. But um that's the only weird thing is that it's gonna cast like Celestial Alignment, and then the games could get weird after that. But it could cast Alignment and then ramp you as well, right? So then it's very good still. <laughs> Most of the time, like, you know, Druid cards only do like a limited amount of things. They tend to summon things, maybe remove things, buff your board. It tends to be very, very positive. It should not be able to cast itself. But I mean, theoretically, if you have this in your deck, then it could cast another one of these from your deck. That it could do. But yeah, like overall, it's hard to imagine this can't be like very, very good. It would be specifically if Astral Communion's in that this might be not good, actually, because it could lose you games very easily. But otherwise, like this is just going to be insanely powerful. It's just the new puzzle box, basically. And it's probably better than puzzle box, actually. It's just the only thing is, is that compared to puzzle box, it's not it's not going to blow up your opponent's board, so you actually need to, you know, you can't just, it's not just like a comeback button, usually, compared to Puzzle Box, but yeah, it's going to do just way more than you expect a card to do. Next up, we have Widow Bloom Seedsman. This is a 4 mana 3 2 epic minion. Valkyrie, draw a nature spell, gain an empty mana crystal. So you should expect to have a nature spell, because you almost always will. You get to tutor something out theoretically, but I mean, you're just like drawing a card, getting a 3-2 and gaining a mana crystal, basically casting a mana growth, all for four mana. Compare this to like Mire Creeper. Mire Creeper would have been like a four mana 3-3 three, three ramp, except um, you usually didn't ramp. You actually would just summon the 2-2 two, two instead because that was actually better. But overall, I mean, this is doing a fair amount. It's always going to be like fine. It's not amazing, but like you're drawing a card, you're getting a mana crystal getting a 3-2. It's fine, right? You're not going to take advantage of the mana crystal consistently as well in arena as you'd expect to in constructed, but it's still a good arena card. You can still pick it, it's just not, probably not super, super premium. And I believe this is the last card for Druid here, which is Death Blossom Womper. 6 mana, 7-6, seven, common minion, Valkyrie, draw a Death Rattle minion and gain its death rattle. So if you have this and only the 10 mana, you have this and Stoneboard General as the only death rattle in your deck. Imagine, this is a common, so it's very conceivable. You could only have like two or three of these, and then you could have this and just don't draft any other death rattles. And then you just win whenever you play this, right? Like that's very conceivable that you could pull that off. And I mean, overall, this is just like, this is just an overpower card because it's a six mana, seven, six draw, assuming you actually have a death rattle, which you, the, the one thing is, is that you don't always have death rattles, but I mean, a six mana, seven, six already playable, right? A six mana, seven, six draw is really good. And six mana, seven, six draw, that also gives you another effect, whatever it is, even if it's just get a one, one or a two, two or something like this, just. It's just like way too much for a card, basically, as far as me is concerned. So this is just a very, 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 very nuts card. Not much more to say about that. You will pick this probably every time, unless like, I guess, I mean, even if you have a negative death rattle, you're still getting a card draw, right? As long as it's not like catastrophically bad death rattle. So like, you're just always going to pick this card, basically. It's kind of what it comes down to. Even if you take five face damage or something, whatever. All right, so it's very, very good. But that is it for Druid. Look at the four cost epic again. It gives you excess mana at turn 10. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize that actually. Is that what you're saying? It gives you excess mana? That's pretty cool. But anyway, yeah. Thanks a lot for hanging out, everyone. See you guys in the next review. What class is next here? What is the next class? We will move on to Hunter. Oh, geez, Hunter. Okay. Um. Thanks a lot again for hanging out, everyone on YouTube and on Twitch as well. See you guys in the next one.